बुझी माथा घोरानो इतना अवश्य ही आपना रा पाम रा शोभाई कोनो ना कोनो ना शोभाई तो एक्सपीरियंस कोडे थी किंतु इतना किंतु होते पड़े कोनो सिंपली वीकनेस थे के अथवा थकते पड़े ये पेच होने सीवियर कोलो कारो सो आशुन आज के आमना जेनी ने डिजिनेस शॉम्पोर के एक जन आशाधारण मेंटर थे के वी करुन बी मोर ग्रेटफुल � and assalamu alaikum dr shamran kazi sir clinical teaching fellow and gpst southwest acute hospital nhs uk assalamu alaikum sir assalamu alaikum uh, saima thank you very much and thank you access medical school for inviting me again it's my great pleasure to come back here again thank you so much saima thank you sir amader ke apnar eto om shomoy dewar jonno sir apni kemon achen प्रेजेंटेशन Sorry, guys. Just having some problem. No problem, sir. Please take your time. Share the screen. Screen share. कोटे कोटे. शोभा की तू request करे दीच्छी. जब please आपना देर बोंधु देर के seniors, juniors, शौकोल के आमदरे live mention करे दीबन. Because आज के topic टा I promise you do not want to miss. So please, शोभा ही. লাইভে চলে আসবেন এবং আমাদের জুমে চলে আসার অপশন আছে যেন আপনারা যে কোনো রকম প্রশ্ন করতে পারবেন স্যারকে এবং স্যার আপনাকে উত্তরটা দিয়ে দিবেন সো প্লিজ সবাই জয়েন করুন আমাদের সাথে জুমে এবং মেনশন করে দিন আপনার বন্ধুদেরকে আমাকে একটু সময় দিতে হবে জাস্ট 2 মিনিটস ওকে এন্ড আই উইল কাম ব্যাক ওকে জাস্ট 2 মিনিটস 2 মিনিটস सर आपने किस तो काइंडली आपने वीडियो चे ऑन कर पेन ताहले आमर शोभा या आपने की देखते पाता वन सेकेंड सर मैं आई जस्ट ट्राइंग टू गेट द बीएस माय प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द स्क्रीन ओके सर नो प्रॉब्लम सर
Okay. Saima, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So everything is done. So hopefully, I'm sorry about this. Okay. So we'll start soon. Sir, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Upload video to off. Yeah. Would you like to turn on, please? I will indeed. Yes. Thank you, oh. sir. Thank you so much, everyone, and sorry for uh, this interruption. So, uh, vertigo, uh, it is quite common presentation in our daily clinical uh, life. I hardly remember a single week where I did not see a patient presenting with vertigo, especially the junior doctors. It is quite challenging sometimes especially elderly patients presenting with vertigo. We know that most of the cases, they are peripheral causes, benign causes, but there are some cases of stroke, especially posterior circulation stroke. So it's very difficult, especially in the COVID period of time. In UK, uh, we have most consultation over the phone. So when somebody is calling for vertigo, we have to be very cautious to diagnose what's been going on. So today, mainly my focus, as you know, this series of lectures that I'm giving, our main focus is clinical communication skills. So today, main focus will be clinical communication skills, how to take data gathering about vertigo, and how to make a management and how and what are the investigations we need to arrange so let's let's begin so this session uh, will run at the beginning with a role play consultation saima will play as a doctor i'll be the patient and we'll try our best to give you a touch about the communication skills that you need when you are dealing with the patients with vertigo. Sir, how can we start? Uh, just a few seconds. Let a uh, few of the slides. Let me have a look. Sure. Okay. So uh, this lecture mainly focus on medical students, third year to fifth year medical students. When you are going for your history taking, data, gather, data gathering to your patients, your OSCE exam. This will be very good uh, scenario for you to how to proceed data gathering in this in such a case. PLAB candidates, this is one of the favorite favorite uh, scenarios for PLAB examiners and foundation doctors as well. It's very important not to miss any life threatening causes presenting with vertigo. And, and especially when people, uh, young doctors who are applying for training post in the UK, you have to go through MSR exam. In MSR exam, these kinds of scenarios would come. So hopefully, as I said, basically it is for junior doctors and medical students. And the, the, and the, the, the informations are mainly based on NICE guidelines. So I already said to you, what are you gonna achieve after this session? Yes, Saima, please go ahead. It's your turn now, please. Thank you, sir. So as sir said, Akun, I'm actually doctor road taker book. So she tell again, I'm up to the shower shot it. Scenario to share for it. So here I am a medical SHO working in A and E. A 72 year old man is referred by her GP to your medical assessment unit. I just haven't felt right for about six months. I feel dizzy most of the time. I tend to veer to one side when I'm walking down the street. I'm very unsteady on my feet and I've fallen over several times recently. Six months history of intermittent dizziness suggestive of vertigo disequilibrium and poor balance leading to faults and restriction of daily activities. Symptoms are aggravated by rapid head movements, by walking in the dark and by visually complex or moving environments. 
onset of symptoms can be dated back to an acute attack of vertigo and vomiting, which lasted several days. No symptomatic relief with vestibular sedatives as like prochlorperazine. 72-year-old man with type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and glaucoma, normal cardiovascular examination, BP, ECG, and echo, osteological and neurological examination, unremarkable except for mild peripheral neuropathy affecting both legs. Okay, guys, so you all know this is a 72 years old man with uh, multiple risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes, glaucoma, and ongoing symptoms for last six months almost every day. And it's dizziness causing him much impacts on his life, especially he had a, had a couple of falls as well. And it is impacting on his psychosocially. So, and this is a case that was referred by the GP to a uh, hospital for further assessment. So, the letter, uh, the, the second letter that was uh, read, it is about the GP letter. When we, we refer a patient to hospital, we just write down the main things why uh, we are sending to hospital. Okay, so uh, take 15 seconds, uh, not 30 seconds, as we are running out of time. First of all, why the GP referred this patient to hospital, number one? Why we did not treat in primary care? Two, think about some of the risk factors this patient have and five important differential diagnosis of this gentleman for last six months having vertigo. And lastly, how, are, how you are going to approach. So a brainstorming for 15 seconds, please. And we'll come back. Okay, so the answer we'll get at, at the end of our uh, mock consultation. So Saima, if you are ready, we can go ahead with the mock consultation. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So audience, now I'm going to start with the mock consultation. Ashikuri Shabai, I'm going to join you. So here, as I'm a doctor, hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. Is it John Brady? Uh, yes, I'm, 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 I'm John Brady. Is it okay to call you John? Please call me John, no problem. Hi, John. This is Dr. Saima. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much, doctor. How can I help you today? Well, doctor, uh, the reason I came to you, uh, actually, I've been feeling dizzy for, for a while. It's been going on. And... It's really, really concerning me. I'm really sorry to hear that. You mentioned I... that you are worried. What are you worried about? Well, doctor, actually what happened about the last six months, actually, I had a few fall and it's really bothering me. I'm, I'm now I'm very worried to go out for work or doing any activities outside home. It, it, so I'm really concerned about this. John. It sounds like you've been going through a very difficult time. Thank you for sharing with me your feelings. I will try my best to help you in the best possible way. Great, doctor. Thank you so much. So, John, when people come with dizziness, that can mean many things. Can you describe to me exactly what do you mean by dizziness? Well, uh, doctor, I, I feel off balance for whenever I try to move. And if I turn my head quickly, the room starts like uh, spinning. And I feel like uh, I'm going to fall over. Okay, so how long it's been going on? It's been over six months now, doctor. Mm -hmm. So do you feel dizzy and unsteady all the time? or there are periods when you have no symptoms? 
I would say it's almost constant, maybe uh, on and off sometimes, but I would say it's almost there all the time. Yes, I can understand. Um, tell me about the first time you ever experienced these sorts of symptoms. So far, I can remember, Doctor, actually, it uh, all began about six months ago. And the, I remember I got up one morning and felt really, really dizzy and sick. And uh, it sounds to me like the room, the room was spinning around and around. And my doctor uh, told me that I probably had vestibular, there's a condition called vestibular neuronitis. Actually, I don't know what is that. Yes, um, I can get this. So can you please tell me that what things tend to make your unsteadiness worse or bring on your dizziness? Uh, well, doctor, it tends to be more worse, especially at night when I get up to go to the toilet. And I also found like I'm particularly bad uh, in busy shops or if I go to the shopping malls or the, using this escalator. I have had to stop going around to my neighbor's house because uh, I'm, uh, it does uh, make my symptoms really worse. Mm -hmm. So can you please tell me that, is there anything that can make you feel better? So far, I remember actually nothing in particular. Mm -hmm. So is your dizziness brought on by turning over in bed? Uh, well, I think any head movement can bring it on. Okay, so do you have any pain or discharge from ears? Uh, not really, no. Okay, so how about, do you have any tinnitus or problems with your hearing? Uh, no, doctor, no. Okay, so do you ever feel lightheaded or faint when you're standing? Uh, not particular. It's mainly actually when I'm moving uh, that I feel really, really dizzy. Otherwise, uh, no, no lightheadedness. Okay, so I really need to know that have you ever suffered a head injury? Uh, not really, no. Okay, so have you had any weakness or numbness in your arms and legs, difficulty of speaking or swallowing or sudden changes in your vis vision? Uh, well, doctor, I would say, you know, I've been having glaucoma for quite a while and it does uh, affect my eyes, my vision. Uh, but it hasn't been changed recently. And so far I remember I never had any mini stroke if that's what you are getting at. Mm -hmm. So do you suffer from any chest pain? Uh, not really. How about any palpitation or sharpness of breath? Uh, not really, no. Okay, so we discussed about your symptoms. Let's move on to your medical history as they are very important to know when somebody comes with dizziness. No problem, doctor, please go ahead. Thank you so much. What other medical problems do you suffer with? Well, doctor, I have diabetes and I, have, I suffer from high blood pressure as well. And as I mentioned, I have been having glaucoma for quite a while. Okay, so can you just tell me that how long have you been suffering from high blood pressure and diabetes? It's been ongoing for more than 20 years, I would say. Okay, so have you suffered with recurrent headaches? Uh, well, as a teenager, I used to have migraine, but I think since uh, last 40 years, uh, I've been fine, no problem. Okay, so can you please tell me, have you ever been hospitalized for any reason? Uh, no, I'm very lucky, doctor. No, I never had to go to hospital for admission, no. Good to hear that. Have you ever had a surgery in the past? Oh, no, no, God saved me, never had. Great, that's a good news. So. What medications do you take? Uh, I've been on aspirin, I've been on ramipril, metformin, and I am on some eye drops. And one thing I would like to mention, like a few months ago, my GP started me on prochlorpheragin for my dizziness as well. So I've been on, uh, I've been taking this for the last few months. Mm -hmm. That is understandable. So. Can you please tell me that do you have any drug allergies? 
not as far as I am aware of, no. Okay, so John, when it comes to the questions of dizziness, it is important for us to know your lifestyle. And it has a significant impact on our health. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, so may I check? Yes, please go ahead. So do you smoke? Uh, no, doctor. Did you smoke in the past? No, I never smoked, doctor. Do you drink alcohol? Uh, well, uh, I would admit, yes, I do. Can you please tell me that what types of alcohol? Well, doctor, I'm very fond of red wine. Okay, so how much do you drink in a typical week? I would say, well, it's almost three to four bottles of wine um, over the weekend. Yes, three to four bottles. Okay, so have you ever thought to cut down? Uh, I should admit, actually, to be honest with you, actually, I did try, but it was difficult for me to uh, come over of it. No, it's, uh, I did try, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be, but can you please tell me that why it is difficult for you? Uh, I remember actually, you know, and every time I did try, but I, 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 it sounds like I, I started shaking and, uh, and I become very nervous, so I could not. Okay, so can you please tell me, by any chance, have you ever taken an illicit drugs? No, doctor, never. This is something I never tried, no. Good. So in terms of exercise, do you do any exercise? Uh, well, to be honest with you, since I'm retired, uh, I, I used to go for jogging and walking almost every day morning. But uh, last over the last few months, this dizziness was really uh, creeping on me. So I stopped doing any sorts of exercise over the last few months. Okay, so can you please tell me that in terms of home, who lives with you at home? I live on my own. Okay, so do you live in a house or a bungalow? I live in a house, doctor. All right, so is your bedroom in upstairs or downstairs? Unfortunately, it is in upstairs. Okay, so can you please tell me that do you face any problem managing your daily activities like cooking, cleaning, shopping, or self-care? Well, doctor, I think uh, I, I do manage everything, but of course I have some difficulties since this problem started, but still I can manage it, yeah. Okay, so what do you do for a living? Uh, well, I used to be a joiner, and but I'm retired now since last uh, seven, eight years. Okay, so can you please tell me that any stress at home or elsewhere in life? No, I think uh, it's, uh, everything is grand. I have a good pension, so everything is grand. And I have a few friends and family members, so I, I don't think so. Okay, so till now, John, you mentioned you have been struggling with dizziness for a while. How it impacted you? See, since this problem getting worse, I stopped doing any exercise. I stopped going out. And it all makes me really, really very depressed, really feeling very low. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. John, what do you think is wrong with you? I don't know, doctor, to be honest with you. Okay, so is there anything else that you are worried about other than brain tumor? Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, you know, I've been worried a bit uh, about the brain tumor, uh, but Apart from this, I'm really worried about if, if I fall again. Mm -hmm. So anything in particular you want me to do today? I'm not sure actually, it's up to you. I trust on you, please help me. Okay, I will definitely help you. So John, you mentioned your business has been ongoing for last six months, started after a few days of cold. It's almost every day got worse with any head movement. You had a couple of fall due to this. Is there anything else you would like to ask me? I think doctor, uh, that's all actually. Uh, there is nothing else that I, I would like to share with you. Okay, so to better understand your condition, I would like 
to do some physical examination. I will examine your BP, pulse, ears, listen to your chest, and also need to examine your nerves. Is it okay with you? Absolutely fine, doctor. Please go ahead. Great. John, the good news is that the examinations is normal apart from blood pressure a bit high today. Do you have any questions? Uh, well, doctor, uh, my, I wonder actually why I'm feeling dizzy then is, is if all the examination is fine. Okay, so in the best case scenario, your symptoms might result in from a condition called vestibular neuronitis a kind of self-limiting infection in inner ears that normally settle down after a few days or weeks. In, in your case, I think it failed to settle down due to your health condition like high blood pressure, diabetes, eyes, as well as drinking alcohol. These are all impaired your brain compensatory mechanism to maintain equilibrium. Does it make any sense? I think, um, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm agree with you. Yes, it does make sense, yes. Great, so also in the worst case scenario, it could be a problem inside your brain. Is it? Oh my goodness, oh gosh. You look worried. Uh, well, doctor, yes. Would it be brain tumor then? Why do you think it is a tumor? Actually, doctor, you know what happened? Um, uh, I had a look uh, on, online and I found like the symptoms I'm having for the last few months. It, it could be from the brain tumor. So it's really, it does really bother me. Okay, I can understand. Look, John, apart from dizziness, you have no other symptoms that suggest it is brain tumor, but still we will arrange your brain scan to make sure nothing sinister going on. Oh, that would be grand. Thank you so much, doctor. It would, it would be a very big relief for me. Please arrange it. Sure. So now let me talk how we are going to manage your condition. We will talk about some does and don't to keep you safe. I also need to run some blood investigations and an ECG. Is it okay with you? Absolutely grand, please. Also, it is very important to involve some other team members like balance specialist, occupational therapist to make sure if any changes at your home to prevent any fall as you are concerned about fall. Are you with me? Uh, of course, Doctor, yes. And I would appreciate that. Please go ahead. Great. Also, it is very important to talk about your lifestyle especially alcohol and managing your diabetes. Also, nope. I will, yes, also I will refer you to a diabetic clinic and eye doctor to help you with your diabetic and vision as it may worsen your symptoms as well. That's grand, doctor. How yeah, that that's, sounds. Yeah, that's grand, no problem. Great, so... You mentioned about drinking alcohol, three to four bottles of wine a week. Any idea why I am worried about alcohol in your case? Uh, well, doctor, I'm not quite sure actually. Why is that? Okay, so, you know, John, alcohol can damage the part of our brain called cerebellum, which maintains our balance. Does it make sense now? Oh, okay, okay, now I understand, yes, yes. So any idea what is normal recommendation? Uh, to be honest, no, I don't know actually what is the normal recommendation, no. No problem. It is 14 units of alcohol in a week. One bottle of wine is 10 units of alcohol. So currently you are drinking around 30 units of alcohol each week, which is very well above the normal limits. I really appreciate that you tried to cut down your drinking in the past. Unfortunately, you were not successful. Due to some symptoms that prevent you from cutting down alcohol, I think these are the withdrawal symptoms that people get when they drink too much alcohol for a longer period of time 
and trying stop suddenly. We have very good community addiction service. If you want, I can refer you to them to help cutting down your alcohol without any difficulty. Uh, all right, doctor, that's fine. And this would be very kind of you. I'm happy to hear that. So do you have any questions? Uh, not really, no, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming today. We'll review you in six weeks time and make sure if your symptoms getting worse with weakness or numbness in arms or legs, any difficulty in speech, please immediately call 999. Please don't drive until we further resist you. All the best. Thank you so much. So that's fine. Saima, thank you so much. Uh, it was really nice. So actually we tried our best to give you a slight idea actually uh, about uh, those communication skills assessment. Uh, and it's over the Zoom, over the Facebook Live, it's difficult to give you the 100% uh, uh, the light or the focus. But still, I think this is the way we should manage uh, a clinical case. And if you look at the full scenarios, the full consultation, we only did not manage Partigo. We manage we did not manage the disease itself. We managed the whole condition. So I will, uh, I'll tell you more about this, but let's have a quick look and let's have a quick mock. Did we cover all the important stuffs that you should cover for your clinical practice? So let's have a look. Okay. So general communication skill, patient-centered approach, not check, check checklist like that means we ask the patient idea their concern what he is bothering about what the patient's problem we ask he has a problem with alcohol that we address he has a problem with fall so in our in the house we ask about his social history he lives in the upstairs so we we refer him to the occupational therapy. That could be something new for us. So the occupational therapist actually what they do, he's a 72 years old man. The occupational therapist usually go to the patient's house and they assess the house if any modification needed. For example, he could be falling due to the tipping on, uh, uh, from the carpet. Or uh, also he has, his bedroom is upstairs. So at night, if we go, if you use the stair, there's a more chances of fall. So we involve occupational therapists to make sure his house is safe for him. He's a 72 years old man and he lives alone. Then we cover his alcohol problem. We referred him to community addiction service. Let me tell you a little bit about community addiction service. This is a service available almost every trust in the UK. Okay. In, uh, in community addiction service, there is a team, they will help with drugs and alcohol. The problem is he was trying to stop alcohol. Suddenly he started shaking, okay? And he started nervousness. That's, these are the withdrawal symptoms. So in his case, he will be benefited from antidotes. For example, labrium or chlorodiagiproxide disulfiram, acamprosate. These are the antidotes helps the patient to gradually come out of alcohol. And this will be uh, under supervision in community addiction service. So we address his alcohol problem. We address his fall. Then diabetes. On examination, he has a loss of sensation in the legs. So this could be from peripheral neuropathy as a result of diabetes. So we refer him to the diabetic clinic. Then comes to the question of glaucoma. So glaucoma affected his vision. As a result of this, he could be falling and his vertigo symptoms could be getting worse from glaucoma as well as from peripheral neuropathy from diabetes. So we refer him to the eye doctor if there is any changes he is needed. So that is the patient-centered approach. 
and we ask about the eyes idea his concern what are the his issue we address his issue as well he has no problem with smoking so if you talk about five minutes about smoking it's not patient center he has, he is not smoking he has no problem with exercise he is he likes to go for, go for work but due to his dizziness problem he is not doing any exercise so if you talk about exercise five minutes it, it will not make any sense the things make will make sense his problem his problem is alcohol his problem with vision his problem with his house so these are the issue i picked up so uh, so we did not only manage but I go. we managed the whole scenario. Establishing repo, that was very good. She was telling me, what's your name? And uh, shall I call you uh, John? Then, uh, so the initial uh, repo was really, really good. Okay. In real life scenario, uh, we, can, we could have shown more about this. Then empathy and sympathy, it was there. When I said, oh, uh, I'm really worried about this, she picked up the verbal cue. Okay, so I'm really sorry to hear that. It mu you must be frustrated by this. Uh, I, I, uh, I can see you have been going through a tough time. So sympathy and empathy was there. So verbal cue was there. Non-verbal cue could, could not be possible over the Zoom. But guys, when uh, your patient is showing frowning facial expression, they're showing a uh, frightening, worrying sign, just pick up this cue. This will add marks in your question. This will help to build up rapport with your patient. Then active listening was there. How do I know active listening going on? Because she, uh, she picked up the alcohol problem. She picked up uh, his issue uh, with uh, vision. He's picked up his, uh, his issue uh, with uh, his house and some other symptoms. So that means when you are at the first half of consultation, you, you are uh, gathering that data. Second half of the consultation, you are reflecting on what you have gathered. So on the reflection side, I, I can judge you whether you, you have been listening actively over the last uh, five minutes or not. So reflection has to be there. Okay, so that's a very important game-changing factors, red flag symptoms. Uh, you guys uh, remember at the beginning, I said 15 minutes of brainstorming. So what are the red flags? A 72 years gentleman presenting with long history of uh, vertigo. So it could be a brain stroke. It could be a brain tumor. It could be uh, multiple, uh, multiple sclerosis. It could be peripheral causes such as Meniere's disease, vestibular neuronitis. So these are the red flags. Central cause, peripheral cause, we will see more in our next slide. Idea, concern, expectation, well uh, established there. Psychosocial impact, we asked him, he said, now I'm afraid to go out. Now it, uh, I'm feeling low, I'm feeling depressed. And social history, we ask about his house, we ask about who else lives at home. Those are the stuff. So these are very important. This package, red flag, eyes, psychosocial impact in these types of scenarios. So we confirm the patient's name. Patient's identity was confirmed. Then opening question was fine. Diginess, let me tell you something. When people say digi, they, they means many things. One, it could be they are meaning fainting, they are meaning lightheadedness, they are meaning pre-syncope, or they are meaning the vertigo. So what is vertigo? We'll see. So you have to confirm that which one the patient exactly meaning. So in this case, patient said, I, my head was spinning. That means he is meaning vertigo. So the opening question was fine. She explored the symptoms. Then uh, presenting complaint, how are you going to proceed uh, to explore more about presenting symptoms? In this case, OD para, onset, duration, progression, aggravating factors, relieving factors, any associated factors. So it was covered during our consultations. 
Okay. Then the, the another one summarize the patient presenting complaint. So uh, if you looked at the consultation at the end of the consultation, uh, she 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 did summarize everything. Then she was asking, "Is there anything else you would like to ask me?" That was fantastic. So a bit of systemic query. Let me tell you something. When you are dealing with dizziness, so which, which are the body systems you should query about? So dizziness means problem with the balance. So what are the structure? What are the organs involved with balance? One is your ears, vestibular cochlear uh, nerve, inner ear. Second most important is the body's sensory relay station. So which one is the body's sensory relay station? This is the cerebellum. So the vibration and the balance, all these sense go to the cerebellum. And there the brain interpret. So if any problem with cerebellum or the brain itself, it, your balance will be hampered. Any problem with inner ear, balance will be hampered. Now, the, the brain, if the brain get hypoperfusion, do not get enough blood from cardiac problems, such as aortic stenosis. If you have aortic stenosis, not enough blood is coming out, less blood going to the cerebellum. Cerebellum is not working properly. Palpitations, arrhythmia. So chest, ear, brain. You have to cover these three stuff. We covered in our consultation, we covered ear, we covered brain, we covered chest. If you looked at our consultation questions. So that was fantastic. Now guys, past medical history. You remember at the beginning, uh, brainstorming question I asked, why GP did not manage this patient in primary care? Why he or she sends this patient to secondary care? The reason, one is his age, 72 years. Two, multiple comorbid conditions. One is high blood pressure, glaucoma, and diabetes. So this poses more risk towards the stroke. So he has multiple cardiac, cardiovascular risk factors that are posing risk towards stroke. And the GP doesn't want to miss the stroke. So past medical history, if you don't ask the past medical history, you can imagine what would be the results of your exam. Okay. Then drug history. There are many, many drugs that can cause dizziness and vertigo. So it's so important for us to know about that. We, we, we ask, about, ask the patients about uh, the drugs. And there is a one, one very important thing, you guys. Uh, you can identify one is prochlorpheragin, the vestibular suppressive uh, antihistamine or the vestibular suppressive drugs. He has been using prochlorpheragin for last few months. Ideally, prochlorpheragin, we prescribe for three days, maximum seven days. If you prescribe it for too many, too, too long, then the brain compensatory mechanism will be hampered. So that was very interesting and very important points to ask about drug history. Then next come to the question of family history. I think this, that was missing from, uh, it's intentionally actually, it's a mock consultation. So intentionally actually I, I did something to point out actually, what are the things we need to uh, add? Family history is so important. Any family history of stroke, heart disease. So this will give more clue or more support to send my patient to secondary care for further assessment. Imagine yourself, if you're a junior doctor, your posting could be somewhere very remote area in Bangladesh and you don't have facilities for investigations. 
So these are the way you need to pick up which patients I need to call ambulance, which patients I need to refer to secondary care. So family history is very important. Social history is fantastic. Why alcohol? People who drink alcohol, they usually smoke as well. But it's for the sake of time, actually, I just smoking part, I just keep one side. But how to take smoking history? If you listen to my previous last uh, video, it's there. Alcohol is one of the very important factors for cerebellar degeneration, cerebellar neuropathy. Okay. So that's why alcohol is very important. And alcohol is a, it's a significant problem in UK, also in the Europe. So if you don't ask about alcohol smoking, uh, that's, that would be a, a big blunder. So we did ask about alcohol. We asked about the associated questions as well. Then we addressed this as well. Here, another important thing is driving. 72 years in, in UK, you can see 80 years old gentleman, 90 years old, 80, 85, that is still driving. So it's very important. Somebody with such a dizziness, everyday dizziness, if they drive, it's very, it's a common sense. What could be the end result? So we asked about driving. We advised him to not to drive. In this case, we also ask about the occupation. It's so important. He's a retired man, so we don't have to do some anything, any changes in his occupation. Usually what we do in real life, if, for example, if this gentleman is 50 years and is still working as a joiner, the you know, building house and repair all those stuff. And it's very important for him not to operate any machineries on all those stuff. So what we usually do, there is a fit notes. We usually give these kinds of patients to take to their employer and the employer uh, consider their problem and readjust their duties, especially if there is any machinery involved. Okay, so that's why occupation is important. Social history, we ask. <clears throat> Driving. Then closing the consultation, that was fantastic. We again summarized the problem. So there was active listening, there was summarizing, there was signposting as well. Signposting, especially when we are moving from one part to another part. We move, uh, first we start with symptoms, presenting symptoms, then we go medical history, then we go lifestyle. We ask the patient, we are moving to this part there, so patient knows actually what is coming next. So that was fantastic. And, and uh, one thing I need to mention, like few of the very long sentences we are telling, it's better to break it down and ask the patient, is, uh, are you with me? Do you understand? It's better rather than talking for a, a, a four or five sentence in one go. Okay, so. So let's have a look actually, this is this case, what happened? Okay, in this case, it's a real life scenario. In this case, the initial differential diagnosis was uncompensated vestibular disorder. That means the patient initially six months ago, he had a viral infection and he got vestibular neuronitis. And we know guys like in, in our ear, we have vestibule and cochlea. Vestibular nerve involves with our uh, equilibrium, maintaining equilibrium. And vestibular neuronitis is a kind of viral infection lasts for a few days to weeks. And most of the cases, people get better. But why in his case, he did not get better. We'll see this. Second differential diagnosis was acoustic neuroma. Okay, in, uh, in acoustic neuroma, we also see hearing loss. We also see facial num uh, numbness, but a facial weakness, but it's, it's not there. Then very important is posterior circulation stroke disease. 
uh, especially cerebellar uh, stroke. So we know in cerebellar uh, disease, there is uh, some other symptoms like uh, dysdiadokinesia, ataxia, nystagmus, intention tumor, speech problem. So, but this patient has nothing like that. Then vestibulo basilar migraine, we ask about the migraine problem, but currently he doesn't have any headache. Now, uh, think about what are the initial investigation uh, if you want to arrange. So what are the initial investigation you, could, you should arrange? Think about 10 seconds and we'll see. And we'll see the final diagnosis as well. Okay, so let's see actually what are the initial, the patient presented to any, and you are SHO. So you are the junior doctor there. So you have, it's your duty to arrange some investigation. So at the beginning, blood pressure, very easy sitting and standing blood pressure to make sure it's not postural hypotension that you are dealing with. Check blood sugar, he has a diabetes. It could be from his constant hypoglycemia. Is suffering from, you can readjust his blood pressure, uh, diabetes medications to easily solve this problem. Third is ECG, very, very important. Does he have any atrial fibrillation, any arrhythmia, those kinds of stuff, easily you can rule out with simple ECG. Then FBC, full blood count to make sure there is no anemia, there is no infection, kidney function test to make sure kidney working okay. And his HbA1c very important uh, because he this guy has problem with loss of uh, sensation in both feet. So we need to make sure his HbA1c is his diabetes is well controlled or not. Thyroid function test guys very very important TFT. Uh, sometimes hyperthyroid or hypothyroid both can cause uh, this kinds of dizziness. And vitamin B12 and folate deficiency very very important. Because vitamin B12, we know uh, it can cause degeneration in the spinal cord and the brain. So our proprioception can be hampered if you have B12 deficiency. And it's quite common in the UK, B12 deficiency. Also the bone profile, make sure it's not hypocalcemia, hypercalcemia, magnesemia. Those are the kinds of things impacting on his nervous system. Okay, so these are the initial investigation you should arrange. Very simple things. Now, this guy is worrying about uh, having a brain tumor. And it's been ongoing for quite a long time. So the GP did not take any risk. And he is also having some risk factors. So that's why we need to arrange an MRI. Because MRI is the best way of investigations for posterior part cerebellum and midbrain pons medulla, spinal cord. These are, this stuff is best visualized through MRI scan rather than CT scan. But MRI scan, you cannot do it acutely in, in every place. MRI is most sensitive, as I mentioned to you, for demyelination, multiple sclerosis, MS, acoustic neuroma diagnosis. Okay. So the final diagnosis, I'm telling you again, in the real exam, actually, this scenario, it's a bit difficult. And just to tell you, to show you actually the holistic approach. So this case, I put you, but uh, in, 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 in exam, usually it's, it's a very simple, straightforward, uh, usually BPPV or Vestibular neuronite is very simple stuff they will give you. But the, 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 the principle of communication has to be there. Doesn't matter what the case is. 
So the final diagnosis is uncompensated vestibular disorder. That means whenever there is a vestibular problem happen, this cerebral, our brain will compensate and we regain our full balance within a few weeks or few days. So this gentleman, why he did not get it? Let's see. It is likely that the patient suffered an episode of viral labyrinthitis or vestibular neuronitis approximately six months ago. And his symptoms of persistent disequilibrium, intermittent vertigo, even ever since are typical of a decompensated vestibulopathy. So why his cerebellum, why his uh, brain did not compensate it? Let's have a look. There are multiple reasons for that. Uh, and one of these is one, he has you know, diabetes, he has high blood pressure. So he has small vessels, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral neuropathy. He has a poor vision. You know, eyes are another important part of our uh, equilibrium, joints. Poor vision due to glaucoma. Then, as I mentioned earlier, prolonged use of vestibular sedatives like prochlorperazine or hysterine, uh, those stuff. If you use them very longer period of time, our compensatory mechanism get hampered. Then self-imposed restriction of activity. It is advisable uh, for vestibular neuronitis the patient should go back to normal life go, uh, as soon as possible. But this gentleman did not go out. He was afraid and he was restricted at home. His activity was restricted. He was taking too much uh, rest. So this causes hampered in his uh, compensation, brain compensation. Okay, so how this gentleman was managed very easy. Uh, they stopped his prochlorperazine immediately. Then, as I mentioned already, we referred him to diabetic. And the most important, very, very important, this gentleman was referred to vestibular physiotherapy. There are, physio, there are uh, you, you guys may remember, we referred him to a uh, balance specialist. This is the physiotherapy. There are a uh, few exercises uh, that can be done at home. And this gentlemen within six weeks is he after stopping proclot paragene and after started the exercise vestibular exercise within six weeks his symptoms significantly improved and he back to his uh, normal activities so the key point is consider a diagnosis of uncompensated vestibular disorder in patient presenting with chronic poor balance and intermittent vertigo. So if it's a long history of uh, unsteadiness, once you exclude any central nervous system problem, you should consider about whether it is uncompensated vestibular disorder. Okay, and the most important is very careful about taking history to exclude brain tumor, stroke, posterior cerebellar stroke, those stuff, because this can kill the patient. Uh, okay, and refer the patient for vestibular rehab therapy. In this case, you can see within six weeks after all, uh, the vestibular rehab exercise, the patients got back to normal. So guys, have a, look, uh, have a look. So actually, what is vertigo? It's a false perception of rotation or movements of patients surrounding. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, when it mentioned uh, uh, in vertigo, patient, uh, dizziness patient can mean many things. In vertigo, it's like a spinning of the head or a false perception of movement. So it could be a sensation of room spinning, body tipping, a sensation of body rocking, body smart swelting. Okay. So a quick look. What are the causes? The most important, you have to divide it peripheral, central. Peripheral case, 80% case, peripheral. And three, uh, four important thing is BPPB, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It's, uh, it lasts only for a few seconds to a minutes. And it, especially when patient moving his head, rolling head on the bed, patient 
gets this uh, uh, vertigo. Vestibular neuronitis, labyrinthitis, you will get a history of recent uh, upper respiratory tract infection, cough, cold, all those stuff. And uh, the vertigo will last for, uh, for a day or hours and resolve on its own. Meniere's disease, uh, episodics, but it lasts more than a minute, last more, uh, last uh, almost an hour or even sometimes more. And patients will feel pressure inside the ear at the same time tinnitus. Another very important, uh, we always get confused, uh, many of us, uh, labyrinthitis and vestibular uh, neuronitis. What is the difference? In vestibular neuronitis, uh, usually there is no hearing loss. Let's go to the central, very important is the stroke, especially the posterior circulation stroke, very important. Space occupying lesion or the tumor and migraine. MS or demyelinating disorder, it's not very common, but stroke, uh, brain tumor, st stroke, especially the elderly people, very careful about elderly patient with like this scenario, these factors of cardiovascular disease, you should have uh, thought about it. Okay. So central cause, which is very important, it's usually start with gradually. Uh, most of the time, or must sometimes sudden onset, but here, it's persistent. In our case, it was persistent for last few months. And in most of the cases, you will find the other symptoms. As I said, dysdiadro, kinesia, ataxia, problem with speech. You remember guys, one thing in our uh, consultation, we asked the patient about, have you had any weakness or numbness in your arms, in your legs, any problem with speech, any weakness or numbness around your face? F-A-S-T, fast symptoms. F for facial dropping, F for arms weakness, S for speech problem, T for time to call 999. So always, business case, always remember, exclude FASD, fast symptoms, which we did in our case. Okay. There is a difference, BPPP, VN, vestibular neuronitis, and Meniere's disease. You can have a look. Okay, and vestibular cochlear nerve anatomy will help you. But one thing uh, to understand between labyrinthitis and vestibular neuronitis, just one thing I would mention. The vestibular nerve innervates the vestibular system of inner ear, which is responsible for detecting balance. Okay, so, so vestibular nerve involved with detecting balance. Cochlear nerve travel to cochlea of the inner ear, forming the spiral ganglia, which serves the sense of hearing. So labyrinthitis, we get uh, hearing loss. Vestibular neuronitis, usually there is no hearing loss. Then it's very important, nystagmus. Okay, if you do the H test, you might find uh, nystagmus in both uh, central coast and peripheral coast. In central coast, it is mainly the particle. Okay, and it's, it's bidirectional, whereas in peripheral coast, it is, uh, uh, it is horizontal and unidirectional. And if patient fix their vision in one point, it will suppress. Whereas in central cause, it doesn't. So nystagmus is another important features. Okay. Management, very important. I already mentioned, make sure there is nothing red flag, no life-threatening things. And also make sure it's not cardiac problem, cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, uh, aortic stenosis, all those stuff. And the symptomatic treatment like prochlorperazine, uh, beta histine, uh, all those stuff should not be for a long time, three days to seven days. And also make sure the patient has nausea, vomiting, you need to admit this as well. And so there are some evidence uh, about uh, vestibular neuronitis. Like if you can start methylprednisolone, acutely, the long-term vestibular problem uh, we could prevent. Okay. Vestibular neuronitis, labyrinthitis difference, I already mentioned you. 
Okay, so there is uh, some evidence as well, like there are some research showing like if we use those uh, vestibular uh, uh, suppressive, uh, those drugs like prochlorparagin, and the meta-analysis showing like the result is almost, it's not, the outcome is, has no significance. It's almost similar to homeopathic remedy. Whereas the physical therapy or the exercise has much more impact on patients uh, rehab or patients recompensate. Exercise, vestibular exercise that I mentioned, this is more superior than uh, taking drugs for a long time. Okay, the last things, importantly, it should be remembered that older patients have a higher incidence of central cause of vertigo. In our case, uh, we have seen. So the older patients always thinking about whether I'm missing the central cause or not. And a very important guys, we have done it. Safety net, these kinds of patients, safety nets, especially over the phone. You need to tell the patient when to go to hospital. Do not drive, do not operate machinery, we mentioned. Do not drink alcohol, we mentioned. And advise the employer if there is any changes needed for his uh, job. We have mentioned those things. Safety net was there in our case. And there are some do's and don'ts with regards to your problem, as we mentioned. So actually what happened? We have 10 minutes. In the real exam, it is 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, you cannot cover all those stuff. But if you can cover what you are going to cover, if you can mention what you are going to cover, that's enough. Your examiner know uh, what you are trying to do. Okay, so we say we are going to, let me discuss how we are going to manage you. We'll discuss about some do's and don'ts to make you safe. We'll, uh, we'll refer you to diabetes clinic. Those stuff, that means within two minutes, you can finish your management because 10 minutes is not enough. So two minutes, you can give an idea to the examiner that these are the things I'm going to discuss with my patient. So, there are some do's and don'ts for the safety of the patients. Uh, lies in a, uh, still in the dark room. If you feel very dizzy, sit down, lie in the dark room, plenty of water, dehydration can exaggerate this. Try to avoid noise and bright lights, especially uh, you remember uh, we mentioned, especially about the shopping mall. If people with this dizziness problem, if they go to the bright light in the shopping mall, there's a chance of fall. And enough sleep, not tired, and start go walk as soon as you're feeling better, go for a uh, walk exercise. And when you are going out, don't look right, left, up or down, no, fix with one object. And if you do this, the, the, uh, it will get aggravated. Okay. I have mentioned this already. There are some tests. It's very, uh, for the young students, very important for you guys to know. Romberg's test, how to do Romberg's test. Dick's whole bike maneuver, how to do it. Head impulse test. Uh, try to uh, uh, know this in, in more details. This is very important. It will come uh, to your exam as well. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this amazing session. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope we, uh, you all enjoyed this session. Yes, sir. We did enjoy it a lot. Onik beshi shundur chilo ebong onik beshi ekta clarifying view power giyeche about what I got. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. No problem. So, eto amra chole shichi. Achke amader session er shesh prante. সবাইকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ আমাদের সাথে থাকার জন্য আশা করি আপনারা সবাই খুব এনজয় করেছেন সেশনটা এবং সারকে সবচেয়ে বেশি ধন্যবাদ আপনার মূল্যবান সময় থেকে আমাদেরকে সময় দেওয়ার জন্য মাই প্লেজার थैंक यू सो मच इट्स माय প্লেজার এই বলি আজকে রাতের সেশনটা তাহলে শেষ করছি সবাই সাথেই থাকবেন এক্সেস মেডিকেল স্কুলের এবং সামনে আরো আসবে অনেক সুন্দর সুন্দর সেশন আসসালামু আলাইকুম শুভ রাত Thank you.